this is Hedy Green. Hedy Green was considered by the Guinness Book of World Records the world's greatest miser. Hedy was born into a family that was already doing quite well, thanks to their whaling business. And if you don't know what a whaling business is, just imagine a baby whale, let's name it Craig. You end up befriending old Craggle here. You share your hopes and dreams, you guys share good times together, you guys share tough times together, but most of all, you're there for each other. You become the very best of friends. But then one day, a ship comes in out of nowhere and butchers Craig right in front of your eyes. So Hedy displayed an interest in finances from a very young age. As a child, Hedy would read financial news for her father and grandfather. At age 13, she became the family bookkeeper. She was brought up in the Quaker faith. As a young woman, Hedy attended balls and parties. Her father once sent her $1,200 so she could buy dresses and gowns. She spent 200 and saved the rest. She even met and danced with the Prince of Wales. And she introduced herself as being the Queen of Wales. Get it? Because her family had a whaling business. Yeah, Hedy Green had game. Her aunt Sylvia died when Hedy was 30. She left Hedy one million placed in a trust that kept her from accessing the money. Which to Hedy was kind of like if you had an uncle who had this super awesome amazing race car and all your life you've been training to be an amazing driver and when that uncle dies and you go to read the wheel, it says So I leave my super awesome amazing race car to my nephew? But for shits and giggles, I threw the keys into a lake. That mother... So Hedy was not pleased. She got to thinking and had the brilliant idea to forge a second page to a previous will her aunt made. A will that conveniently left everything to Hedy. And she may have or may have not also persuaded her auntie to sign it. To make it clear, there were two wills, both written by Sylvia. The first one leaving everything to Hedy. The second one invalidating the first will, leaving one million to Hedy and the rest to servants, friends and even some charities. So Hetty forged a second page to the first will that basically said, and please keep in mind that I'm paraphrasing, yo, this is the will that matters because Hetty is totally cool and deserves my money. And if anyone tricks me into writing another will, then that will is totally like wrong and anybody that made me write it is a poop head. Signed by Sylvia, Hetty's favorite aunt. This led to a trial that features some noteworthy individuals like Louis Agassi, zoologist and part-time racist. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Benjamin Pierce, and John Quincy Adams' grandson, named John Quincy Adams. At one point during the trial, they started comparing a lot of signatures of John Quincy Adams' grandfather, John Quincy Adams. And that led to nail-biting moments like this. Uh, yeah, I think signature number 24 was pretty identical to number 49, but number 51 didn't compare as well as number 10 as to number 1. Benjamin Pierce, owner of a potent beard, and his son Charles, also an owner of a potent beard, also examined the signatures on Sylvia's will, focusing particularly on the downstrokes. Now paraphrasing Benjamin Pierce's testimony, he said something along the lines of, both signatures have 30 identical downstrokes, and the odds of that happening are 1 in 2,666 millions of millions of millions of times. So that's basically impossible, and old Mr. Pierce here just solved this case which he then proceeded to drop the mic and left the courtroom. Hedy obviously lost the trial. Hedy then married Edward Henry Green. He was a businessman with a fortune close to one million dollars. He, interestingly enough, was almost the complete opposite of her. He enjoyed all the luxuries and comforts his money could buy. She then moved to England in 1867, possibly to escape charges for forging the will. She had a son named Ned and a daughter named Sylvia in honor of her aunt. While on England, she kept investing and increasing her fortune. She mostly invested in railroads, real estate, and government bonds. Her investing strategy was simple. In her words, I buy when things are low and nobody wants them. I keep them until they go up and people are crazy to get them. She returned to America in 1874, and Hedy's frugality continued. Hedy once spent half a night searching her carriage for a lost stamp, worth two cents. And this is a prime example that the more I read about her, the more the line between determination and insanity became blurred. Two months after Hedy's 50th birthday, the banking house John J. Sisko & Son, that had more than $550,000 of Hedy's money, went into bankruptcy. When Hedy heard of this, I guess we could say, shit got real. Hedy demanded her money back. But in a plot twist worthy of Prime M. Night Shyamalan, the bankers revealed to Hedy that their biggest debtor was... her husband, Mr. Edward Green. <laughs> After a pretty intense fight, Hedy paid the money her husband owed. 
Hedy's relationship with her husband would never be the same. They would never legally divorce, but they parted ways. A very popular story about Hedy is that when her son Ned broke his leg as a child, Hedy tried to set the leg herself. Mother, I appear to have broken my leg. Nonsense. It's slightly dislocated. Here, I'll put it in place. Mother, please. The pain is unbearable. Just shut up, you fragile wimp. Mother, the leg is hanging by a thread. My patience is hanging by a thread. When that didn't work, she disguised herself and her son as paupers and tried to get in at the free clinic. Doctor, I apologize, but my son seems to think he needs all this extravagant medical equipment and professional help. I'm telling you, sometimes I think he just wants attention. Apparently, she did finally consent to pay for medical care when Ned's leg became infected and had to be amputated. This whole story, by the way, is completely false, which is kind of messed up. And it makes you think, what will be the story that people will remember you by? Will it be that time you drunkenly went up to a group of people and said, Watch this! Started going full sprint, tripped, and fell face first into a cat's bowl full of food, therefore making them think this was exactly what you had in mind in the first place. That totally didn't happen to me, by the way. Hedy's fortune grew so much that Hedy bailed New York City by lending it money twice. Hedy took care of her husband when he became ill in the latter stages of his life. Edward Green died in March of 1902. He was 81 years old. Less than two months after Edward's death, Hedy went into a police department to get a permit to carry a pistol. In her words, I am a rich woman and some people want to kill me. Hedy described many times she had been threatened to a New York Times reporter. She became convinced her father and husband were murdered. Now the desk sergeant in charge hopefully asked himself, should Hedy Green be allowed to carry a gun? Well, let's look at the facts. She is 68 years old. She has many public enemies. She has a temper. And last but not least, she is convinced some people want to kill her. So, should Hedy Green get a permit? Yeah, sure, why not? The people were not pleased. But in reality, Hedy never did anything stupid. In fact, she became capable of accurately shooting someone a few feet away. And I have only one word to describe that. Bad ass. After her husband died, she would usually wear simple mourning clothes. This, her frugal ways, and her financial success made people nickname her the Witch of Wall Street. At the time, I imagine this was quite mean, but to be honest, that nickname just seems to be pretty badass. Hedy Green is rumored to have made several contributions to charity, although she never fully admitted it. She was also most likely afraid that if she admitted it, she would have numerous requests the very next day. As she grew old, Hedy converted to the Episcopalian faith, not because of a change of faith, but simply so she could be buried with her husband. And on the morning of the 3rd of July, in 1916, Hedy Green died. Her son Ned, interviewed by the New York Times, suggested that his mother wasn't the miser people believed she was, and he claimed she made several contributions to charity throughout her life. In conclusion, I personally believe Hedy wasn't the great miser some articles make her out to be. In the end, she was just a human with many flaws. Persuading your dying aunt to give you all her money is at the very best not cool, bro. However, to me, she just seems like someone who was incredibly passionate about something. Money! And pursued it without caring for a second what people thought. And that is more than most of us are capable of doing.